So, um, hello everyone. I'm going to present our paper called Unbiased Graph Embedding with Biased Graph Operations. I'm Nama from the University of Virginia, and uh, this work was done in collaboration with Lu Lin, Jin Li, and Hong Ning Wang. So, graph structure data is everywhere in our world, such as social networks or protein structures. So let's take an online social network as an example where the users are connected with each other uh, as friends. So users in this network uh, are associated with some protected sensitive attributes such as uh, the user's gender, race, or job. And these sensitive attributes can affect the observed connections among the users. If we directly apply machine learning methods on such uh, graph data, uh, the models can inherit undesired bias and stereotypes about the sensitive attributes, which will in turn pre, uh, make biased predictions based on these sensitive attributes. In particular, uh, let's take a look at the typical pipeline for applying machine learning methods on graph data. So we are given an observed graph where, the node, where each node is associated with some uh, potentially sensitive attributes. And we will apply a machine learning model to learn the node embeddings to represent each node. And these node embeddings are applied uh, to downstream tasks such as social recommendation, loan application, or criminal justice. However, because the observed graph, uh, the connections in the observed graph are influenced by the sensitive attributes, the node embeddings will capture such sensitive information and lead to biased unfair predictions. Uh, for example, the, the model applied on such biased embeddings may recommend only female friends to female users or predict lower loan appro approval rate for black applicants. So in order to address this issue, uh, the goal is to learn unbiased node embeddings from the given biased graph observations, where the embeddings shouldn't contain any sensitive information about the sensitive attributes. So there are uh, a large body of literature on unbiased graph embedding. Uh, arguably the most popular way of unbiased graph embedding is adding adversarial regularizers. So the basic idea is to filter sensitive information by making a discriminator fail to predict sensitive attributes from the known embeddings. However, such regularization is only a necessary condition for example, random embeddings will easily satisfy this regularization. Because of this, uh, this, this methods really hurt the utility of the embeddings. And there are also some other methods. For example, the Fairworks tries to generate unbiased random walks by giving each group of neighbor nodes an equal chance to be chosen. However, uh, but this Fairwork only applied to random walk based methods. And also another work called Debayes, which is based on the conditional network embedding method. It tries to absorb, uh, absorb the sensitive information by assigning a prior so that the learned embeddings will focus on representing the other information. However, both their work and Debayes cannot be directly generalized to uh, graph neural networks such as GAT or SGC. So instead of using uh, some ad hoc methods for unbiased graph embedding, we try, we try to propose a principle for unbiased graph embedding. And that is to learn from a biased free graph. So let's first look at uh, the observed graph uh, from the real world setting. Like we are given our observed graph and uh, there are nodes edges and uh, each node is associated with the uh, attribute vector. And and we denote the attribute vector as uh, by A. Some of the attributes are non-sensitive attributes denoted by tilde A, and then the other attributes are sensitive attributes such as the gender race of the users. And now imagine that uh, uh, there's another ideal world where only non-sensitive attributes exist and there's no sensitive attributes. So the edges in, uh, in the graphs in this world are only influenced by the non-sensitive attributes, which will give us a bias-free graph. So if we can learn the embeddings from such a bias-free graph, we can guarantee that uh, the embeddings are unbiased, right? However, the question is that we can only observe the 
we can only observe the uh, real world biased graph. The question is how we can learn from the best free graph. So in order to infer such a best free graph, we first inspect how the graphs are generated from the network science perspective. In particular, we will, we will assume that there's an underlying structural graph where the edge distribution is purely governed by the global structural properties. Then when there are, when there are node attributes that distinguish the nodes, the node attributes will rewire the edges in the structural graph and modify the structural edge distribution based on effects less, like homophily in social networks. So specifically, in the underlying structural graph, the edge probability between a pair of nodes only condition on the uh, structural property, data S. And when node attributes take into, uh, take into effect, the edge probability between a pair of nodes will condition on both the uh, attributes of the nodes as well as the structural property, data S. Based on Bayes' rule, we can rewrite uh, this edge probability uh, by, by the product of two parts. And the first part is basically the edge probability of the structural graph. And the second part is, is a probability ratio about the attributes with or without uh, condition on the edges. And this second part uh, corresponds to how the attributes will modify the edges in the structural graph. So similarly, let's consider uh, a, a bias-free graph where only non-sanitary attributes exist to modify the structural graph. So similarly, we can write uh, uh, the edge probability in this bias-free graph as conditioned on the non-sanitary attributes of the nodes and uh, the structural properties. And uh, uh, the same as in the observer graph, we can uh, use Bayesian rule to rewrite this probability. And the first part, of the Bayesian expression is the same. And the second part uh, of the probability ratio is only about non-sensitive attributes. And the, this part describes how the non-sensitive attributes will modify the structural graph. As we can see here that based on the Bayesian expressions of these two uh, edge probabilities, the only difference is in the second part. So, uh, so if we take the ratio between the edge probabilities of the best free graph and the observed graph, the first part will actually cancel out, which is uh, about the stru underlying structural graph, which is the same for both graphs. And the, only the second part remain. Unfortunately, the probabilities in the second part can all be estimated from the observed graph. Therefore, we can calculate uh, this ratio for every pair of nodes, as long as the uh, node attributes are given. So by this, by this uh, edge probability ratio, we actually connected the uh, observed graph and the bias-free graph. So based on the connection between the two edge probabilities, we first developed a weighting-based and bias graph embedding method. So let's uh, take a look at the original objective for uh, graph embedding, which is uh, the summation of per edge loss over edges in the observed graph. As here gives the uh, uh, reconstruction probability between path nodes uh, based on their uh, embeddings. Instead of directly using this original objective, we reweight the per edge loss for each pair of nodes based on the ratio of edge probabilities. Uh, from uh, of the best free graph and the observed graph. Based on our previous derivation, this edge probability ratio will be simplified as weighting only the second part of the edge probabilities in the Bayesian expression, which is this thing. And in expectation, this, uh, this weighted loss will give us the, the, the loss on the best free graph, where the per edge losses are summed over edges sampled from the underlying best free graph. And uh, because we are learning uh, from a best free graph, the unbestness of the embeddings are guaranteed. So this method gives us a sufficient condition for unbest graph embedding, and we call it UGEW to, to represent the weighting based method. 
Besides the weighting based method, we also develop a regularization based method to connect the observer graph and the biosphere graph. The so basic intuition is that when the loading values are learned from a biosphere graph, the edge distribution is reconstructed from the embeddings should be the same with and without the sensitive attributes. So in order to describe the uh, edge distributions, we take the expectation of re reconstructed edge probabilities in groups defined by the node attributes. In particular, with and without sensitive attributes, we will have different node groups. And uh, we basically we will require the expected edge probabilities in each group, in, in groups to be the same, as long as the non-sensitive attributes of the two groups are the same. So this way we can add a regularization on, uh, in the original objective to connect, uh, uh, to, to enforce the embeddings to be learned from a best free graph. And this gives us a necessary condition for a mass graph embedding. So, so far we have the other uh, weighting based method called UGEW, which gives a sufficient condition for mass graph embedding, as well as a uh, regularization based uh, method called UGER, which gives us a uh, necessary condition. So we can, we can also combine these two methods to treat off the sufficient and necessary conditions, which give us uh, UGEC that represents the combined method. So to evaluate our developed uh, methods, we can conduct comprehensive experiments on uh, three popular data sets. Uh, and we also apply the developed methods on five embedding models. To compare with baselines on devising the embeddings, we use the original training without any devising. And we also use a fair work and the compositional fairness constraint, which is adding adversarial regulators. And we also include the, the random embeddings as a baseline, which is expected to give us the perfectly biased embeddings. So we first qualitatively evaluate the devising effect of uh, our proposed method, UGE. So we visualize the node embeddings uh, learned on POCAC N dataset using GCN. So node colors in the visualization represent the regions of the users in this dataset. And the region is treated as the sensitive attribute to be devised by our method. So without uh, device, any devising method, we can see that so the embeddings can be clearly clustered by the region of the users, which means the, that the embeddings contain the region information. But after applying UGEC, we can see the non embeddings can no longer be differentiated by the region of the users, which indicates that we successfully removed the region information from the embeddings. So for quantitative evaluation, uh, besides, besides, uh, besides achieving good ambassadors on the, in the embeddings, we also need to maintain high utility. So it's, it's important to evaluate the utility ambassador trade-off in the resulting embeddings. For utility, we, we evaluate on the link prediction task and use any CGS at 10 as the metric. For ambassadors, we will train classifier on the load embeddings, and uh, we use micro F1 uh, score to measure the predicting, uh, prediction performance of the classifier. Basically, uh, lower prediction performance means better ambassadors of the embeddings. It's so showing uh, in these three figures, and uh, these three figures correspond to different sensitive attributes. So top left corner, each figure uh, corresponds to ideal, the ideal trade-off of utility and ambassadors. So as we can see, uh, our proposed methods based, uh, based on learning from a best free graph can always achieve uh, better uh, utility and ambassadors trade-off compared to other baselines. So we also want to study whether the embeddings from our method can lead to fair results in industrial tasks. So in particular, we use uh, demographic parity and equal opportunity in the link, link uh, prediction task for fairness evaluation. And uh, for both metrics, the lower the better. So still the top left uh, corner means the ideal uh, trade-off between fairness and the utility. We can see that uh, our proposed method, the UGE can achieve, uh, can achieve better fairness while still maintaining a high utility. 
So in conclusion, we propose the principled way for unbiased graph in mining, which is to learn from an underlying biased field graph. We developed the uh, UGEW weighting based, UGER regularization based, and the uh, combined UGEC that trade off the sufficient and necessary conditions for unbiased graph in mining. Empirically, our development methods search to better utility and maintenance trade off as well as fairness in downstream tasks. To further improve UGE, for the weighting based method, we can try to learn the weights from multiple graphs instead of just estimating the weights. For the regularization based method, we can uh, try to impose more accurate movement matching mechanism than simply using our two distance on the expected edge probabilities. So following the principles uh, of learning from a bias free graph, we can further model the graph generation process and really sample some bias free graphs for graphing mining. And currently we only design uh, the loss the objectives based on the bias free graph. We can also design unbiased graph neural network models that aggregate edges based on the inferred best free graph for message passing. So that's all. Thank you for listening. I'm ready for uh, any excellent. questions. And yeah, any questions from the audience? Right. Uh, I actually have one question when I was going through your slides. I actually took some notes. Um, so uh, in your slide number 13, when you are trying to explain the concept of, uh, you know, the um, probability ratio of between biased and unbiased graphs, uh, it looks like your framework requires some sort of node pairwise comparison between the biased graph structure and the unbiased structure. Uh, so I'm just wondering, um, if that's the case, would that uh, impact the scalability of your method and uh, how would it be used for real world graph which large scales? Oh, actually, um, our de developed method, especially the weighting based method, will not influence the scalability at all. Like uh, basically in the weighting based method, as you can see in uh, this uh, objective, Basically, we'll just reweight the per edge loss in the original, in the original objective function. We only add weightings here, so this won't influence the uh, training procedure of the uh, graph embedding method. So it doesn't include in increase the compl complexity at all. I see. But uh, does this vary the performance of best in your experiment? Sorry, oh, you mean and this that... weighting based matter? Yes. Yes. Oh, it, yeah, actually, um, it depends on the specific problem. Sometimes, like weighting based method, it uh, achieves better trade off between utility and uh, messiness. Sometimes, the regularization based performs better. And, uh, like, sometimes combining uh, these two methods give us the most powerful results. Gotcha. Yeah, but uh, usually, Thanks. like, uh, our, our method based on learning from a uh, best free graph can beat the baselines, the previous methods on the utility and the business trade-off. Yeah. 